Hi everybody, it's me Jody Coding Maniac and in today's video I'll tell you everything you need to know about over and under sampling. In data science and machine learning we try to get the best possible predictions for the problem at hand, but the outcome depends strongly on the data that we have and often this data is imbalanced. What this means is that one out of all classes appears more often than the others, which often makes sense. Let's for example take cancer diagnoses. There are many more people that are cancer free than people that actually have cancer. So this data set would be highly imbalanced. Such imbalanced data sets have issues while predicting outcomes because the model will favor the majority class since the algorithm sees those samples more often. Over and under sampling are ways to address this problem. There are many algorithms for both methods and in this tutorial we will have a look at some of them. I will show you the metrics of different approaches and in the end I will also show you how to do cross-validation right with sampling since there is a mistake many people make while using sampling and cross-validation together. Okay, let's tackle this. Let's first talk about what the difference between over and under sampling is. Remember, the goal is to get a better balance between the classes of the samples. When oversampling, you practically generate more synthetic examples of the minority class. So you basically fake more examples through algorithms. And when undersampling, you reduce the amount of examples of the majority class through scientific algorithms. In undersampling, there are again two subtypes of algorithms prototype generation and prototype selection. The difference is that in prototype generation you don't actually use the samples you have but you generate new samples that are like the ones you already have but are different. And in prototype selection you use the samples you already have but reduce the total count of examples in the majority class through different algorithms. But enough of this blah blah. Let's see this by example. Let's get to the code. All right, here is the code. Let's step through it. So first of all, here are the imports that we will be using in this tutorial. I won't go into much detail uh, here, but what I want to mention is that I'm using scikit-learn as well as a contribution library to scikit-learn called imbalanced learn, which has all those nice algorithms for uh, over and under sampling. So, and also I would really recommend you to check the documentation of Imbalance Learn because it's really, really awesome and with a, a lot of charts that explain everything in much more detail. All right, so the third thing we will be doing is we will declare a helper method to print our metrics nicely and concise. The next thing is we will, uh, we will define the uh, classifier we'll be using. In this tutorial we'll be using the random forest classifier but actually it doesn't really matter which classifier you use because we won't try to get the best classification results or the best outcome. We will simply have a look at the different metrics and see uh, how over and under sampling will change those metrics. So the next thing is the data set which is also provided by the imbalanced learn. So this is our imbalanced uh, data set uh, of wine qualities. Again, we won't go into much detail here because actually it doesn't really matter. What matters is that it is imbalanced and yeah, we will see the value distributions shortly. After that, we will do our usual training and test splits. And then we will define three different models. One without any algorithm uh, pre-processing, the other one, so the second one, we will uh, be using oversampling and uh, specifically we will be using the SMOOTH or S-M-O-T-E, I don't know how this is pronounced, algorithm, which stands for, uh, I have written it down, Synthetic Minority Oversampling Technique. So yeah. As the name says, it's an oversampling technique that synthetically creates new samples of the minority class. It's a very common algorithm, so we will be using it. There, although there are many more. So again, 
explore the documentation of imbalance learn. Uh, it is really, really awesome. And as the undersampling algorithm, we will be using near miss. All right. And yeah, the near miss algorithm is a prototype selection algorithm. So it will select all uh, samples out of the samples we already have, but uh, of but reduce the the sample count of the majority class. <coughs> Sorry, I got a problem with my nose going on. So yeah. Sorry if there are weird sounds in the video. All right, then. We will, well, basically the next lines are simply printing out metrics. Yeah, we don't have to talk that much about those. Yeah, we will be using a classification report as well as uh, several uh, other metrics like accuracy, precision, recall. Uh, yep, so without further ado, Let's run the script and let's see what it produces. Um, as usual, the code for this tutorial will be uploaded on GitHub and the link will be uh, yeah, down in the comments somewhere. Okay, let's run this. So we type pi, whoops. Main pi. And then, whoop, there it is. Ta -da. Okay, here it is. So, first of all, let's have a look at the data distribution. As already mentioned, this data set is imbalanced, and now we see how imbalanced it is. So, for the target value of minus one, there are 4,715 entries or samples, and for the target value one, they are just 183. But after applying the smooth or SMOTE algorithm, everything changes. Now we have 4,715 uh, entries for the value minus one and the same amount for the value one. As you guys see, we oversampled the minority class so that this data set is now balanced and has the same amount of samples for both of the classes. And yeah, the next one is the near miss undersampling. As you guys see in this one, we undersampled the majority class and reduced the count of samples of the majority class. So it's equal to the uh, count of the minority class. So those two counts are now identical as well. And yeah, let's see uh, what the metrics say. So those two metrics or classification reports are for the normal data distribution, like for without applying any over or under sampling algorithms. And the second one is uh, for the data set after uh, the SMOTE or smooth algorithm was applied. So as we see in the precision department, which is, uh, as we know, I already made a video about this, is uh, not to label a negative sample falsely as a positive sample. As we see, yeah, well, those are uh, pretty similar, but in the recall department, we see that the recall value changed uh, quite significantly and um, yeah as we recap the recall value is the ability to find all the positive values so as we see for the minus one it isn't that hard to find all the positive uh, all the positive values um, but as we saw in here because the because the value one is the minority class and is highly dominated by the majority class. It's really, really hard to find all the positives for the value one. After we did the oversampling, we see that those uh, that this situation 
uh, got a lot better. So now we are able to find um, the, all the positive values for one better than previously. All right. So as we go further, we see that the uh, the scores, which is again the accuracy, doesn't differ that much between the normal and smooth uh, pipeline. But we see that the near miss pipeline score is much much lower than the others. But this is to be expected because we reduced the total amount of samples for the algorithm to learn drastically <coughs> so that now um, the algorithm performs uh, a lot worse than before. Uh, but as well it is expected if we reduce uh, the samples from over 4000 to just uh, yeah two times 183 yeah it is expected that the algorithm will perform uh, worse than before all right then let's have a look at the other at the other metrics again we see the accuracy is pretty much the same for these two it's bad or worse than before for the near miss classification which is an undersampling technique the precision uh, yeah is here again a bit lower but this is again okay because the precision before was um, highly how to say overfit by the by the majority class so uh, now it's more realistic I, I want to say and the recall got a lot better because <coughs> now we are able to better find those positive values for the uh, one scores for the one target values yeah and the f1 score also got better after smooth All right, we see for the near miss classification, the precision is really, really bad. It's <laughs> just like uh, three and a half percent, but the recall got better. And the F1 score is also like pretty bad. But now, as I already mentioned, uh, I will show you how to do uh, cross validation right while sampling because there is a gotcha that you have to watch out for and yeah let's look at the code so basically this is the cross validation and this is uh, yeah first let's let's have a look at doing it wrong and then I'll show you how to do it right okay so in this example for doing it wrong we will define k-fold with five splits and this is, these are just some arrays to, to to capture the results so we can get a, a mean out of those values to have an average okay so basically we uh, use smooth and use it on our training and our uh, on our training data set so on the features and on the target uh, vector. Now we got the uh, oversampled um, values here and then we use the splitting, building our model, fitting our model and predicting the values. So this is done wrong. Why is this wrong? Because we did the smooth uh, data sampling before doing the splits. Let's think about this for a second. Why is it wrong? Well, <clears throat> the goal of the cross-validation is basically to, to, to split the, this, uh, the data into multiple chunks where we use one chunk as, as the test data and all the other chunks as training data. And then and in the next run, we will use another chunk as test data and the remaining again as training data. And we do this n times, in our example, like five times, so that the training data every time is 
uh, so the test data every time is left out and the trading data doesn't know anything about it. But if we do the sampling before the cross-validation, there is some data leaking into the other sets. So basically we get generate synthetically new data and we do it before we do the we do the uh, split separations. The data isn't truly unseen anymore because we maybe duplicated entries and now there is a high chance that those values are as well as as well in the test set as in the training set. So how to do it right? The right way to do it is we define our our k fold or splitting and then we use the smooth algorithm just just on the parts of the data that are that are relevant for the training and the test data is completely left out so that there is no leaking of information into the test set uh, or from the test into the training set so this algorithm performs better and doesn't overfit how bad the situation is we will we will see uh, when we look at the metrics because let's see if we do the cross validation wrong then we have a highly 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 overfitted data because the accuracy is 95% the precision is uh, 76% and the recall is again 95% f1 score of 82% that's uh, that are really high numbers but as as i already mentioned they are pretty over uh, they are pretty much overfitted so let's see how the real fit right looks so the accuracy is again at 95% but we see that the precision and recall and the F1 score as well are much much lower and those values are more in the area of the ones we got um, while doing just um, the model calculation without the cross validation so this shows you that this cross validation is uh, is the right thing and is not overfit and that this is just wrong although it looks good to have numbers that high but they aren't worth anything because they are just overfit all right that's it for this episode i hope you enjoyed it if so please subscribe to my channel follow me on facebook and stay tuned for the next episode. See you then.